I've made a mistake. Hey there everyone, today we are revisiting an older patch. We are looking at Arduino into Max again through the serial port, but this time someone requested that instead of pushing a button we have sort of a live stream of data to play with. And that's exactly what I've got in front of me here. So you can see I've got my Arduino. And then I have a, let me just, so someone requested a bit more of a, an interactive pad. So I have the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor here. Okay, so now that we'll have a look at the patch, in Arduino, it's very similar to what we had before. It just uh, set up different for our uh, sensor, but basically there is a point where it writes onto the serial port uh, either a negative one, so no value, or the distance that it's measuring off the sensor. And then our max patch, it starts off the exact same way that we're used to, so we have a metro banging our serial port. The serial port is then giving out its raw data, which is in ASCII. So every space and carriage return, we, we sort of, we section off that information, so we're getting one chunk of data. ITOA turns it from ASCII into max code that we understand. And then from symbol turns it from ITOA into some an integer that we understand here. And I've got it rooted, so if it sees negative one, then it outputs zero, else it outputs the actual value. And I've got two two examples of how to use it here. So the first is just a simple reactive audio patch. So it brings in the symbol signal, which at the moment will be zero, times is it by a hundred and passes it into the cycle object, and you'll hear. That as I move my hand, the audio changes. And then a second example is using a video player and XFade. So at the moment it's defaulting zero. Let me start both of these. But as I move my hand, it allows us to fade between the two different videos that we've got playing. So it's very cool. It's just something a bit different using live banging data rather than a button press in Max to do things. So I have the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor here and we're going to wire it into our Arduino. So this is a 4-pin ultrasonic sensor that has the uh, trigger and the echo wired into two different pins. And it doesn't need any additional resistors, they're all already soldered onto the back of the board. I bought this from sunfounder.co.uk.com. It's from Amazon. And I've got my Arduino Uno here, which is a Genuino. So please support Arduino directly. I'm going to plug my red into the 5 volt. My ground black here into the uh, ground. So the red is VV, uh, VCC on the device, but it's just power. And then I am going to do blue, which is my echo, into pin 11. And my trigger into pin 12. Now, uh, it doesn't actually matter which of the digital pins these go into, they just need to be in any because it, we're going to hard code them into Arduino. Start a new Arduino. What we're going to simply do is in our setup, we are going to do serial.begin. We're going to start our serial port and then we're going to do pin mode uh, trig pin output pin uh, pin mode echo pin input so we have our trigger pin sends out the the information or sends out the ultrasonic sig signal and echo pin receives it so when it bounces back off an object that's why the ultrasonic sensors have two two silver dishes on them uh, and finally just for testing i'm going to turn on the board led just to make sure uh, led pin output board led for testing 
And now we need to declare them as variables. So we are going to do define echo pin 11 echo. I'm going to do hashtag define trig pin 12. And I'm going to do hashtag define LED pin uh, what is the LED on an Arduino Uno? It's 13. And then I'm going to do a couple more variables. So I'm going to have int maximum range. I'm going to set that to about 200. So that just, we're going to use this that if there is no hand detected or there's no object detected and the uh, ultrasonic sensor is reporting a value over 200, it will give us a, a cancellation value and the same int minimum range equals zero. So you can use these to, to customize set ranges. So if you only want objects within certain distances of the sensor. And now I'm gonna do long duration distance. So when you do two variables, one after the other, I suggest it just clears them both as empty longs. Duration used to calculate distance. Uh, okay, and now we are into the loop section. So first thing we're going to do is digital right trig pin low. Uh, delay microseconds two digital right trick pin high delay microseconds ten. We use this to, to work out the distance between objects. So what this is doing is it's making sure that the, the pin is off, turns on for 10 microseconds, then turns off again. And duration is equal to the, the pulse in that the echo pin then receives. And then from the, the numbers that this works out, we can, we can work out the, the actual distance in centimeters based on the speed of sound. So calculate, whoa, calculate distance in centimeters based on the speed of sound. And to do that, all we need to do is distance equals duration, duration divided by 58.2. So now we have the distance or the, the time it takes for a sound to blast out and come back in. And then we turn that into a distance in centimeters based on that time. Finally, we're going to do some quick math. So if, uh, or some sort of uh, error handling, distance is greater or equal to our maximum range or distance is less than or equal to our minimum range uh, serial dot print ln negative one uh, digital right LED pin hi so what we're going to do is if it's outside our maximum range or inside our minimum range, so basically if it doesn't see a hand at all or there's something wrong with the sensor, then it will turn the uh, it will turn the LED pin on and it will output a, a negative one onto the serial port. Uh, and then we're going to do else serial.println 
distance digital right ID pin low and if it there there is something detected within the maximum or minimum range which is uh, um, we've got 200 so that's 200 centimeters which is a fair fair whack uh, but the, the ultrasonic sensors are really sensitive and they can do that uh, then we will output our actual distance received and turn off the LED pin and then finally we're going to add a delay of about 50 milliseconds here just to make sure that we don't bombard the serial port too much save that upload it oh. and go back and work out all your mistakes I've made a mistake Ah, oh, these are commas, not colons. That's my fault. Upload again. So Max isn't running at the moment, so we can open the serial port. You'll see we have negative ones appearing every 50 milliseconds. I put my hand in the way and boom, suddenly we have a centimeter reading of my hand from the sensor. Super duper. So now we close the serial port, push that to one side and open max. So I've got a blank one here, I'm going to trigger, I'm going to use a metro, any value you want, I like 100 milliseconds, and now I'm going to pass that into a serial. I know my board is already on port C, but if you don't, you can put in a print. Let me just make that full screen, so print, and you can see that my iPhone is connected on B, and C is my board. I'm going to pass that into a integer just so we can see the values coming in. And fantastic. The fact that it's giving us 10 means that I know the serial port is reading. Because 10 is the value of a space in ASCII. And now we need our cell 1310. Going into our ZL group. 1000, member ZL group, uh, when we pass in our cell, starts the group, then closes the group as it receives the carriage return, then the final space. So every sort of print LN on the serial port, every time we do a new line, it sends that packet of data. And then this value at the end here just has to be bigger than our metro and bigger than our delay in Arduino, because this is just uh, to make sure that the group is open for long enough to get all the data. We convert uh, our integers into max code. We form symbol max code into numbers that humans understand. And if we read that, turn on my trigger, you'll see that we get the same values that we had coming out of Arduino. And now you can really use that to do whatever you want. I like to use the cycle object, it's always a good cycle object is always a nice one and then we can just all I'm gonna do is copy the tutorial and the the numbers we've got coming out here are really low so you can times them by two any number you want really plug that in give it some volume And as you move your hand, it makes beautiful, beautiful noises. And then the other really basic one that I like to do is you can use jit.xfade to fade between two video sources. And it literally stands for crossfade. It uses a float value if I can get it to make me one. There we go. And all you need to do is put in two movie files or anything really. Read redball.mov. And let's mix that with something like a uh, blader. Is blading. 
I can't remember what the name of blader blades blade something like that. It doesn't really make a difference. Plug one in one end, one in the other end. Jet.p window. Read ball, red ball. Red ball and dozer. Uh, we're gonna need to scale our number from zero and we know the maximum we can have is 200 to zero and one. Plug that in. And you'll see that as I move my hand, our video starts to fade between each other. And that's just a very quick example of how to use our Arduino 2 serial code to produce something a bit more fun, a bit more dynamic. Thank you very much.